Hey everybody, Dave here. How are you all doing today with the Syndicated Pipe Club once again here on the air airwaves of the internet? Which is really a misnomer that I picked up from Padre Piper. Anyway, as always, I have Greg with me on one of these sides. Maybe he's even down here. I don't know. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Doing good. Speaking to you through the radio waves between our uh, recording equipment. That much is certain. It is a type of radio wave. The more you know. <laughs> so how's your week been, Greg? It's been a week since we talked last. It has been a week. Uh, I had a COVID scare for a moment there, but uh, thankfully my... Uh, you know, test came back uh, negative. Excellent. So, yes, yes, that was good. Um, besides that, just uh, just enjoying fatherhood. Uh, had a, a little bit of an upset uh, boy this uh, evening, but, uh, you know, besides that, it's been uh, pretty fun. Besides that. How about you? Oh, yeah, it's been an interesting, uh, interesting uh little bit of time go as i mentioned uh last week in our last batch recording we uh got surgery coming up for my wife's knee next week recording time if is like just uh six days away from now on the 20th but tomorrow my wife has to go for her own covid test because they require it before you to be a negative have a negative test before you can do any surgery so that's going to be fun going to have a couple of weeks there as if you've been listening you know that uh, it's just gonna be me the kids and an invalid wife so i'm not gonna have time to do sh jack nothing i don't even know if i'm gonna have time to make pipe club meets um let's see other than that i had a neat little collectible come in that's in frame back there by my death star let's bring it up to the camera show everybody mm. As you may or may not know, I'm a fan of the online game Sea of Thieves. And I found uh, when I was browsing their Instagram that they'd put out a, a nice little collectible. Limited edition, They're, they made it for their anniversary. The game first released in 2018, so they put this out. There we go. Nice. It's, uh, what it is, it says Athena's Fortune here. If you, I'm, I think you can read it. The screen on the uh, on the uh, computer is too small, so hopefully you can make that out. It's uh, one of the characters, the Pirate Lord. He's the main ghost of the game. He uh, had a ship called the Athena's Fortune, and uh, that's the replica nameplate of it. I got number sixty-eight, I think. Yep, number 68 out of 2018. Pre-ordered that, so that was a fun little thing. So it's going to be sitting back there in that spot there. No, I'm gonna, I'll put it back later. And uh, yeah, that's the only other real interesting thing I've had show up. Kind of reminded me, hey, you haven't played Sea of Thieves in almost three weeks. It's been busy. Yeah. <laughs> no, that reminds me, I've been... Uh... For the past uh, couple of months, I've been horribly addicted to a mobile game, which uh, is kind of surprising just because, like, I'm, I'm not much of a mobile gamer at all. But uh, the really nice function about this one is that, uh, I mean, you can play it manually, but you can, it also has an autoplay button. And uh, since it's like a RPG system, and most of the time, your characters are just stronger anyway. I just can keep tapping that auto button play, and uh, auto play. Yeah. yeah, and watch the numbers go up. And uh, yeah, it's it's satisfying in, in that sense. Uh, so it looks like you're smoking a bulldog again this week. Yes, uh, uh, GBD um, bent. Uh, yeah, bent bulldog here uh and in it i am smoking uh, some uh, mcbaron's navy flake one of my favorite buttons nice well tonight i've got me the uh savinelli i 
forgotten the name. That's ah, a Savinelli root briar uh, billiard. It's a rustication pattern that they no longer have because from my research tells me the person or persons who used to know it didn't teach anybody and they're now all dead. So if you can only find them in the estate market. It's a great little pipe. Yeah, it looks really nice. And in it, I'm smoking some Cherokee from the Country Squire. Something that will not ghost. Yeah. Or leave it what kind of uh, what kind of blend is it? It's an aromatic blend. Um, hmm. Virginias and a few other things. Like it's not uh, it's not heavily cased or anything like that. But it's sweet, it's sweet tobacco. It's got. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd say almost a honey flavor to it. But that hmm. could just be because I've just recently had honey. So, yeah. You know, I might just be tasting leftovers. Yeah. But always, always a fun time. Smoking from the Country Squire. I've got three two other blends here. Um, pretty sure sometime this year I'll put in another order for, uh, for to John David and get some more... Uh, Cherokee and a couple other of his blends uh, up here from down there. Always, always good. So, Avatar. Yes. What do you think about this two-part? This two-parter, the Winter Solstice part one, parts one and two. Yeah. No, there was a. Uh... It was a nice two-parter. Um, what I liked about it is that, uh, I mean, and we were kind of talking about it before we got on the, uh, we started recording, but even though it was a two-parter, overall, like, they felt like self-contained episodes. Uh, you know, the, the first episode dealt with more of, like, a, a local problem that, you uh, Aang and the gang had to, you know, help out with kind of continuing the theme of uh, some other episodes this season so far, where you know they travel to a village and they're in peril and need the avatar. And with this one, it was a uh, a spirit that was uh, taking people at night and uh, had a nice, creepy-looking uh, kind of remind me of like a Japanese yokai. Of, Type of uh, creature, which uh, if you're not sure what a not sure what a yokai is, it's kind of like a, a basically a Japanese ghost or spirit uh, that uh, is part of their folklore. And uh, and the second episode dealt with more. It went from local with a little bit of stuff with Aang to just kind of being a fun little um, race to get to a location in time. Which uh, I could really, it basically kind of, <laughs> that second episode felt like my life every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it was basically like we had three episodes contained into those two. Because you could have taken the stories from the, uh, the local village and then taken the stories from the uh, Fire Nation Temple and made them two separate stories. And played the overarching uh, Winter Solstice as uh, pulled pulled those out and made them one episode. Mm -hmm. I was like, basically, all you really needed to do was tack something on the end of. Uh, like you could basically, there wasn't enough there, but if you could have rounded it out a little bit, you could have. Uh, made the Aang's journey in the spirit world in the, the first episode its own episode if, if, you, if you had yeah. enough for sure there, you know, there's little fun things that you can do with uh, Aang realizing some, some different things like uh, you're realizing he's in the spirit world and trying to figure out how to, how to get out uh, even you could have probably had like a, an encounter with the with that creature in uh, of the spirit of the forest uh, 
maybe have an encounter there or two before uh, wrapping that up. Yep, yep. So you could have got three episodes out of that. Like, there's no way you could have done, like, four or anything like that. But still, the way they did it was great because you could take them as self contained or you could take them as a two parter and uh, they're still enjoyable. Mm hmm. And really, they were both enjoyable. Like, I can't really think of uh, one that was being, you know, maybe for a lore perspective, the second one was more important. But uh, I don't know. There was also some important things established in that first episode, too. From a lore perspective, the both episodes were actually fairly important because it's in the first uh, of the two episodes that you learn that bending is not a thing in the spirit world and then in the second one we learn all the stuff about Sozin's Comet that is tremendously important for the entire series yeah because it all takes place before that comet arrives right uh, yeah the series on a whole starts it just depends on what season it is when the when Sokka and Katara find Aang. But he, I'd say the whole thing in a, in a span of time takes up maybe the whole series, all three seasons, takes six months. A year tops. That's, that's crazy. Like, to me, I, I didn't realize that it was, in a timeline perspective, that short. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're at... Well, it is six months, because they're at the winter solstice in these two episodes. And then the summer solstice kicks off something in season three that they they attempt, but it doesn't work. And then the comet shows up sometime within a few weeks of the solstice, if I remember everything right. So yeah, it's like six months plus a couple of weeks. And plus a couple uh, a couple weeks before the winter solstice is when Aang was found, so it's really not that long at all. No, not at all. That's a that's a very tight storytelling. Mm-hmm. And I mean, kudos to the writers that had to do that. I mean, they took that thing and. They told it very well. And I mean, look at the last year from March to March, 2020 to 2021. Look at everything that's happened in a year. You don't usually pay so much attention to what's going on around you. Media hasn't let you not pay attention to what's going on around you in the last 13 months. And mm -hmm. it's not... Un unbelievable to see all that stuff happening in that amount of time because we've seen a lot in the last year so absolutely but again kudos to the writers because they made it believable yeah for sure uh what else uh yeah I loved just like the whole uh you know, you had the first part, the first episode with Aang, you know, trying to stop that creature and uh, not really knowing how to approach it. Like, <laughs> it, it really makes you wonder how much Aang was truly prepared for before uh, becoming the Avatar. Because it seems like they left some pretty important details out <laughs> to him. Well, they did. They left quite a, quite a bit out. Because if you remember back in the episode when they when they were at the air temple, when he does, when Aang has the flashback to when he was told, Kiazzo tells him like their only mistake was telling you early. I mean, he was told at twelve, and then sixteen is when uh, they're told established in uh, that episode along with the. Season three episode where Zuko finds out about his grandfather's 
But, uh, so yeah, like, he just found out he was av the Avatar, and, uh, they, uh, hadn't even really started trading him yet. All he knew is that he was the Avatar, and he ran off. Because he didn't want to be separated from Gyatso. Right. So yeah, like he he was not prepared at all, and then to wake up a hundred years later, and uh, still you need to be the Avatar. You have to learn everything, and as in this series of episodes, Roku himself said, it takes years to master mm -hmm. all the elements. You have six months. Basically, is what he means. Let's just flat out. Yeah, you got to do this in six months. It took me years, but you have months. I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've definitely been in those jobs. Mm hmm. Yes, it only took us years to develop this, but now you have to re reinvigorate it, and you have. Oh, what does it now? It's, it's it's noon. You got till six. There you go. Six hours. F fix this. Well, we did have uh, you know we brought you on this position. We had someone that was going to train you, but he's gone now. So you're Good gonna luck. have to figure it out on your own. Yeah, I've been there too. Those are never fun either. Yeah, that was uh, yeah my last job experience. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I, before I kind of uh, look off in the distance, sadly, and think about that whole thing. Um, yeah, I don't have any sad music queued up, so no, right? Don't do that. That won't work. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, and. and the whole spirit world aspect of, of the first episode too, like that was interesting. Um, it definitely felt like there was a, certainly more danger in a way, even though he was never really in danger, like it kind of immediately they let you know that, uh, you know, I, I feel like he's more at risk when he's uh, doing that. Oh, for sure, for sure. And it's it's not like uh, he actually went into the spirit world on purpose. He totally did that by accident. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it, it also will show how far Ang comes in such a short period of time because by the end of the season, he's able to enter the spirit world on purpose. Mm -hmm. Spoilers. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to not having to do that. Oh, well. If you're listening to what? this, most likely you've watched the show anyway because it was on so many years ago. But I like that uh, the whole, um, you know, that each avatar kind of has an animal mount uh, that they travel with. You know, uh, the last one, you know, had a dragon. Aang uh, has Appa. Uh, I imagine Korra has uh, a friend as well. She does. It's some sort of... I'm not sure what the heck it is. It looks like a dog, but... It body of I don't know it's it's got the head of a dog I can tell you that much I'm yeah. not really big on Korra I tried watching it a couple of times and I could just not get into it and it wasn't the fact that they made the avatar lesbian it was none of that it's just I just couldn't do it yeah well, even that like they only did that in the very last episode it's kind of like uh, they, as a way to slip it in there so you could probably just get away with watching the show anyway without that really being like a, a big deal if that bothered somebody. But uh, 
you know, it's a shame because like I remember when um, Cora was announced and I saw like the the stills and stuff and you know saw that it was going to be kind of like steampunky. Like I thought that was pretty cool, but uh, you know it's too bad that uh, it didn't uh, live up to the first series. Yeah, it, it didn't didn't for for me, and obviously not for you either. But I know there are people out there that loved this, loved that show too, and thought it was great as an extension. But uh, I just couldn't. I've tried because I know there's some good lore in regards to how the world works in Korra. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I just. I don't know. I'll have to, maybe I'll give it another go. It's on Netflix too, so maybe I'll just after this is over, give it a go, see if I can get get into it. For sure. And uh, I liked also that uh, uh, one, once they solved everything, that the spirit creature was actually like a, a panda of some sort. Yeah, I yeah. That was, uh, uh, and it was kind of it was a really cool design too, like. Uh, having the four arms and uh, the small legs and uh, like once you saw what it really was it was just like oh that makes that sense that makes sense yeah so uh, yeah, uh, and they do a nice kind of uh, and what I like too about with, with this episode was just uh, you know revealing the quest for the next episode of what, what he needs to do and uh you know, the fact that's all tied in with like a calendar and when the sun is supposed to hit at a specific spot because that, that, you know, that factors into a lot of different like archaeological mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. spots are all around the world. There's, you know, definitely, you know, like, <laughs> and, you know, all these like ancient, uh, you know, man made things when uh, that. You, know, you discover like oh like it's all like matched up to like the movement of the sun or the moon and everything pretty fascinating and then to top it all off they don't fly off into the sunset at the end of this episode they fly off into the moon rising yeah which was the end of the two parts mm-hmm and what I liked too about um, the first episode was, uh, you know, we got to learn a little bit more about Uncle Iroh and uh, the story of him and uh, Zuko. Like, mm-hmm. it's another one of those episodes where you you get that sense that uh, there's more going on with Zuko's story than just simply being, you know, the antagonist or. Uh, mm-hmm. Or the rival for uh, the Avatar. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, until, and, and as long as that goes on, it's 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 a good. Uh, Zuko's always, no matter what side he's on, always a good foil for Aang. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers this as far as I, I go. Do you got anything else that you wanted to bring into it? No, for uh, part one or for or both two. parts? We've been doing both parts pretty much, bouncing back and forth. Oh, oh I mean, I know I've mainly been talking about, like, the first part. Um, the second part, uh, I like the story about uh, the sage that remained loyal to the Avatar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that was that was a good uh, little uh, information download too. Mm-hmm. And that a uh, cool temple too. Uh, you know, making uh, good use of a volcano. Uh, cool location makes sense with uh, you know Fire Nation and everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, the chase too to get to the island that was. Uh, fairly exciting you know some especially with like the fireball section uh definitely although 
watching that I, I was just like you know like none of these kids really have like any sort of real like harness or uh and it's like seat belts or anything and here they are doing all these like fast pace like dodging and move, moving around and they just have that <laughs> the thing to hold on to and and even ang like ang just is holding on to the reins he's not really uh like buckled into anything i'm, I'm just watching that thing like yeah i would i would probably be panicking well, <laughs> like at least within, within the universe, anyway, it makes sense uh, somewhat with Aang because, well, he is an airbender after all. Sure. For sure. But yeah. like, he's not too much in danger, but uh, poor, uh, <laughs> poor uh, Sokka and uh, Katara. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, they're, they're basically at the mercy of Appa, which, you know, Appa's not going to let anything bad happen to them, but uh, you know, you're also kind of like... <laughs> In a uh, in dangerous spot there with with all the fireballs. Although uh, love the part where Aang essentially just like kicks through one with his airbender. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, and then um, when the fire uh, uh, um, when um, the previous Avatar um, when he comes out of the, his uh, temple in spirit form, uh, on you know Aang's uh, Avatar form. And just basically like wrecks the place. Like that's a, another really cool kind of like uh, moment. Yeah, that was the whole. Uh, okay, you guys have not done what you were supposed to. I'm getting rid of your place. Mm-hmm. So that was so that was a lot of fun as well. But yeah, overall, like. Uh, I think these might be uh, my two favorite episodes so far of the series. Uh, you know, we have many more to go to. Oh, yes, kind definitely. Of, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, like, I, I really feel like it, it's picking up now, too. You know, I, I enjoyed the other episodes, but this one, like, it kind of felt like, you know, this uh, the lore drip came at just the right time to keep everything moving on yeah and we're rapidly moving towards one of my uh, all time favorite episodes of the entire series which (laughs) is funny because I've noticed when I watch shows like go back and watch shows like older ones a lot of the things that I really liked happened in the first season of these shows Man, I didn't think that happened in season one. Mm. No, I, I got what you mean. Like, uh, you know, The Flash. A lot of uh, my favorite episodes come from season one. Um, like, I know there's others as well, but uh, that one especially comes to mind. But anyway, um, the I, I know you're not a fan of The Office. With me, with The Office, I feel like the show really gets going in season two, but I, rather than season one. But season one was only six episodes, and I think they were still kind of like finding their footing. And uh, once in season two, I feel like they kind of understood more of what they wanted to do, and so in a way, that's kind of like my season one for them <laughs> in a sense but but yeah like I, I do feel like a lot of shows uh, their first season usually usually is their one of their best yeah all right well, I think that about covers it cause sure I uh, don't really have much else to say because I do agree with everything you did said about the, the things and the action and whatnot. It's always good. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode, everybody. And again, we're in a time travel stretch because we're batch recording again, so you'll see us exactly as we are this week and next week. So let's see. If, like, we're talking, let's see, this week is... Get my mouse over where I can actually get the date. We're at the 28th. 
of April with this episode. And we will see you again on Cinco de Mayo. Let's chat with you later. <laughs> <laughs>